Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Uh, this is breakout session three, track A of the Academic Libraries North Conference. Um, before we get started, I'm just going to run through some quick housekeeping. Uh, questions will be taken at the end. Feel free to pop them in chat or when we come to questions at the end, if you want to raise your hand, uh, we can come to you to take a question on mic as well. Um, the whole session is being recorded. Um, and we also have closed captioning available um, to turn this on. You just need to go to the CC um, or live transcript button at the bottom of the screen and turn this on from there. Um, also, just a quick note about our code of conduct. Um, we're asking all delegates to abide by the code of conduct, which can be accessed by the delegate brochure or via the ALN website. Uh, we want ALN 22 to be an ex enjoyable experience for everyone. So if you see anything inappropriate, uh, please fill in the web form in the code of conduct or drop us an email. Um, I think that's everything that I need to cover. So I'm now going to hand over to Jennifer Rowland and Louisa Futter from the University of Bradford for their workshop. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you very much to the ALN team for a bit of last minute tech wrangling. Um, so we're going to have a couple of breakout rooms for you to discuss and what we're going to do instead of feeding back into the zoom um, we're going to get you to put anything interesting or useful that you come up with onto a padlet um, while i'm running the slides i can't see anything except the slides so um, louisa i believe has put the link into the chat and again we will we will um put the link in again when it comes to actually typing onto the padlet time um and then the padlet will obviously be available afterwards like the slides as a resource um, so now then let's hope that this works. Can you see my second slide start headed aims? Yep, that's grand. Marvellous. So this is all about really collaboration and basically what a good thing it's been for us at the university. And, you know, we hope that it's something that you will find useful to take forward. But we also want to be sure that kind of everybody here has a chance to say we did this and it worked really well or we've had a problem with this. Has anybody? Um, had a better way to do it. So we really want to be sure that you, you're kind of able to share your own successes as well as just listening to us for 45 minutes. So the reason that um, the University of Bradford Library has quite a lot of experience with plagiarism um, and academic integrity um, is essentially we were asked to run the plagiarism awareness programme for the whole university um, for students who had already plagiarised um so which is a long session um we teach them about what plagiarism means and then they have to pass a quiz on that we teach them about referencing and then they have to pass referencing exercises obviously passing the referencing exercises is the hardest part of that for them um so originally we used open educational resources to set it up because it had to be done quickly but by now it's much more its own thing our own thing um so the first thing that we want to um talk about is a case study, something that happened very, very much in the first few years that we were running the, the Plagiarism Awareness Programme, PAP, as we call it, um, that students are investigated and found to have plagiarised and sent for this disciplinary process. They hadn't realised that they were plagiarising, they hadn't done it on purpose. So we had a mixture of students, some clearly had done it on purpose, and we just crossed, they got caught cheating, but there were some really sort of genuine cases particularly, but not only international students hadn't realized they were doing anything wrong. They tended to be extremely polite. They tended to get back to us very quickly. They tend to be really frightened about this. And they also said that the plagiarism awareness program was brilliant. This three hour, really sort of in-depth stuff about referencing. They said, this was the best thing I've learned this year. Everybody should do this in their first year. So that was one issue. As a side note that we'll come back to later, students were appealing against being found to have plagiarized and were saying you never told me what I should do and now you're telling me off for not doing it so that was obviously a big admin issue for the university but that's a, a side issue so essentially what we'd like you to do to do is discuss this case study students who are getting in trouble but hadn't realized that what they were doing was wrong what could we have done about this as a library or as a university what would you do in your library about this so as I said what we'd really love you to do um, in the breakout rooms or just as the breakout rooms finish anything that you think you'd like the rest of the people here to see please put it into the padlet and i'm sure that louisa has by now put the link into the chat and on the next slide i have a qr code in case you want to uh, to use that i'll just move the zoom controls out of the way 
so that's what we would like you to do and I think we'd like to spend six minutes in this breakout room if that's okay um, sort of talking about students who didn't realize they were plagiarizing what could we have done about it what would you do about it so if we could start the breakout rooms now that would be brilliant no problem Welcome back, everybody. Um, so thank you all very much. Um, so I assume, I, and uh, as a guess, that the kind of things you were talking about in your um, sessions were mostly things that you as a library could or would do. So here are the sort of things that we as a library did. Um, we very much learned from the students who were doing the programme, the kind of questions they were asking, what they weren't understanding. Um, and we made our referencing teaching I'm going to say a lot better than it had been you know we'd been doing sort of all the standard stuff and some people have been gamifying it to make it interesting but we all sort of backed off and added more to the beginning why are you being asked to reference um, what's the point of it because they were very much focusing on am I getting the full stop in the right place and we were sort of having to say that's not the, the meaning of referencing and we also added a section on paraphrasing. I now basically, I won't teach referencing unless I teach paraphrasing at the same time because nobody else was teaching it. They would, we were just saying, when you do a direct quote, you reference like this. When you do a paraphrase, you reference like that, but they didn't know what paraphrase meant. And when you explained it, they didn't know how to do it. Um, so I started saying, you know, here's a sentence, paraphrase this sentence and cite and reference it. And that was actually a really interesting thing to do in a lecture theatre. Um, and I think sort of a useful thing, certainly for first years and people starting a master's course to, to be asked to do. And we started talking to the academics. There was also the university's response to this, which um, was that, you know, we were re really not doing right by our students. So Senate put into place that every student joining the university at whatever level from foundation year, first years, um, people joining at direct entry to second or third year, master students, PhD students, every student had to do an academic integrity induction. And since we ran the PAP, we were also asked to do the academic integrity induction. Um, and we've been doing that since 2011. Um, and that was really the first time that we started working with academic skills. We wanted to make sure that there weren't mixed messages Obviously, we can't control what every academic is saying, but we wanted to at least make sure that we were getting the, the very base general information, the message the same with academic skills. Um, it's always been a standalone online thing, though, of course, with, as with any online thing, you can get people into a PC cluster and run it with them. And it's simple, it's basic, mostly talking about how to paraphrase and obviously listing out this kind of thing is plagiarism, like self-plagiarism exists, here's how not to self-plagiarise. Now, there have been a whole bunch of issues. And again, originally I was going to talk for about 10 minutes just about this. What I will say is, please email us if you want to know more about running an academic integrity induction for the whole university. We can share um, knowledge till the cows come home. Um, so I'm going to skip over this slide entirely. I'm going to say, what has that meant for us as a library? So we've continued running the PAP, we've been running academic integrity, so basically we've been seeing more and more plagiarising students, just gaining more and more experience. We're essentially de facto one of the bits of the university that's an expert on plagiarism now. And the academics started talking to us more and saying, I think this student has plagiarised. Can you look at this piece of work and give us your opinion on it? So we started seeing again more real live student writing as opposed to what we think student writing looks like. During COVID, obviously, the plagiarism awareness program had to go online and the failure levels went up. And obviously, being online, that was a massive hassle because we were having to email back and forth with feedback and things. 
the students who didn't understand it, in the room, you can just talk to them until they do understand, but online it becomes clearer, kind of, really, this student has to fail this. We can't say to the university, this student now understands plagiarism properly, because they don't. And so it was really during COVID that we sort of said to the language centre, which is the English for Academic Purposes, um, part of the university and academic skills advice center which is where Louisa who's one of the presenters here is from that we basically we needed help and we needed to work together to make sure that our students were actually learning what they needed to know so it started off with referencing and plagiarism but it's really reached out so I'm now gonna um, as I go to the next slide Louisa is going to start presenting because this is about the language centers um, view of teaching, referencing, plagiarism, and all the rest of the things we've been talking about. So, Louisa. Thank you, and good morning, quickly. Um, I'm Louisa, I didn't introduce myself at the beginning, but I am a Senior Study Skills Advisor at the University. So, um, it's great to be talking to you about this, because I just want to add to what Jennifer said about reaching out to us. We were also reaching out to the library, um, because because of students like the one that I'm about to kind of introduce you to. So I want to talk to you a bit about some of the issues Jennifer's raising from the perspective of our academic skills support offer. And um, the second case study that we, we kind of like introducing you to this morning is very typical of the typology of some of the students that historically we've seen quite regularly through our service. Um, it will become apparent that we're, we're starting to, to kind of change that and shift that with some of the, the the interventions that we're putting into place with the library. Um, but you might recognise this, this kind of student. Um, it's a student who may turn up at a quite a standard referencing workshop. Um, they te typically tend to be a, a PPT student who's done a degree overseas and is um, new to higher education in, in the UK. So they, they're kind of presenting with a lack of awareness of some of the core referencing conventions and also the principles of academic integrity. Um, in our higher education system. Uh, normally they're prompted by um, failing a first assignment. So from our perspective as writing skills um, specialists, that tends to manifest itself through sort of a description, descriptive only style of writing. Um, there isn't a very, very well developed line of reasoning, there's a lack of analysis, and the feedback really reflects some of the um, the, the issues around uh, information literacy, you know, sort of um, not using sources particularly well, um, overuse of direct quotation, um, and as Jennifer said, um, an inability to paraphrase. Um, so we've got a student who's really keen to learn and confused about why they're not doing well. They haven't really accessed support in the UK at a UK institution because they feel I'm a master's student. I've done the degree already, I should know how to do this. Um, so they're not necessarily aware of some of the learning needs that they have. So what we'd like to do is invite you to do another breakout discussion now and just add additional comments to the Padlet that really capture your thoughts and experiences of this type of student. Um, so kind of considering what else might be going on besides the obvious need to understand the reference, referencing system and accurately cite sources. Think about what else could be put in place by sort of key support services such as ours and the Language Centre to help students like this address their challenges. So it's the same QR code, same Padlet, and I think we're going to do six minutes again um, to think through that and, uh, and then join back together. I think we can probably stretch it and do seven minutes. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody wants to put anything onto the Padlet now, feel free. Louisa? Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. Um, and thank you for the contributions, which uh, hopefully will touch on some of the points um, that appear in the Padlet um, in the next couple of slides. And then we have um, at the end the opportunity for kind of a plenary question session. So a very short one, but um, hopefully that, that will address anything because I'm going to move on quite quickly now um, to talk about how we responded to this issue at Bradford. And I think the first key thing to say is that our response overall, so that's us as a collaboration of services, library, language and academic skills, instrumental in that um, overall response has been a shift away from treating plagiarism and referencing as a standalone issue. So in the past, um, 
I know speaking from our, our service side, we've been very boundary driven and that, that has limited the extent to which we've been able to cultivate um, and contribute to uh, academic integrity within that wider context of sort of independent learning and developing our students as critical thinkers um, alongside that awareness of the expectations of studying in higher education in the UK. So this shift has, has enabled us to move to move beyond um, kind of just responsive approach and think more about how we can embed into wider learning and teaching strategy and that kind of more systemic curriculum development um, things like universal design for learning um, and that type of thing and and as, as Jen said it's been it's been a really good opportunity to kind of reach out and dis and sort of establish ways of working with other services like library so um moving Excellent. on from this sorry sorry I was just uh, next slide please it doesn't want to uh, there we go <laughs> okay so we're we're, before I kind of go into some of the more specific details on this slide, I think it's important to say that we're responding to this by really actively moving towards a skill based model, essentially across our services. And that's enabling us to deliver a much more developmental approach to student centred support and kind of move away from that remedial approach that that tends to occur when you are just reacting to a plagiarism case or a referral from um, complaints and appeals. So key examples are really around us increasing our information exchange across our services so we're doing things um, on a kind of a basic level around sharing administration duties and that's reducing duplication of efforts and um, increasing that sense of, of collaboration um, but we're also identifying quite specific areas for improvement and change alongside that as well so an example um, is in uh, the language center has really given us support um, to ensure that letters and instructions are written in plain english and when we're kind of minimizing that overwhelm from the jargon to our international students who, who aren't necessarily using English as a first language. And um, the next point I want to make is that we have focused on a much more integrated support offer. So we're really um, doing this through manifesting uh, workshop programs that are much more aligned and have um, increased the, the accessibility for students to core writing and study skills. Um, and things like um, uh, those underpinning writing and study skills like note making um, and reading and, and paraphrasing as well um, to really support their understanding of the relationship of those skills towards maintaining their and developing their academic integrity. Um, we're working jointly to deliver quite specific interventions. For example, the Language Centre leads on a, a really comprehensive writing skills programme for PGT students that builds over a period of about four weeks and we've kind of used that as a framework um, together with library to develop more shared teaching content and um, materials that kind of allow us to address those learning gaps that maybe have been there in the past and um, another key point um, is around how we have approached our support offer and we're cultivating a much more agile approach in, in the last year or so, especially post-COVID, um, with that kind of hybrid approach to teaching and learning. We're working with um, Students' Union, for example, to identify student need with them and respond with a wider range of accessible options, such as a live online plenary question and answer session um, with a panel, which was comprised of, of reps from all three of our services at once, which we'd, we'd uh, be really keen to repeat. Um, so I think overall, from an academic skills service perspective, uh, contributing to this discussion view in the um, library services, I think the, the key point I want to leave you with is that it's really offered significant advantage um, in terms of the significant inclusivity benefits of working more closely together. I think that's the most compelling part of our joint approach, really, is that it's been enabling us to increase the way that we scaffold our support to students who are struggling and really put the emphasis on increasing the accessibility of resources and content. So back to Jen. So as Louisa said, sort of this year we did some um, things with the Students' Union that they'd kind of come up with some issues that um, they wanted to talk about and so we sort of have, have responded to them. So we want to make sure that we keep that up. Obviously the new 
sabbatical officers are coming in, but we want to sort of make sure that we keep up the work that we're doing with them. Um, we do want to, again, we've been talking with academic staff all along and teaching staff who aren't academics, but we really need to make sure that we are sharing back everything that we're learning because they have, obviously they've got the skills in the subject area, but a lot of them have less experience than us at this point in the understanding of what academic integrity means and how to do it. Um, so things like we have some um, learning material for academics in our supporting teaching at Bradford Canvas module um, about what Turnitin means, how to interpret it, what is and isn't plagiarism in a high Turnitin score or a very low Turnitin score. So we're sort of continually making that better. Um, and we're also talking with our quality assurance um, and um, teacher development, so the learning teaching quality enhancement area to make sure that there are still areas particularly I'd say at master's level, where they assume that people are coming in with higher writing and study skills than they have. So we're trying to sort of make sure that as new modules are designed, those are being designed in. Um, and the academic integrity induction, as I mentioned early on, we're doing things like, um, again, beefing up the basics in that. So the background is, why shouldn't you plagiarize? It's not fair because X and Y, but we're also gonna put in this summer why am I being asked to do something that I can plagiarise? Why is this not just exams? Why is this not just lab work and reports? What is the point of coursework? What am I supposed to be learning? Why am I reading? And therefore, why is plagiarism bad? Because it's, you know, you're not learning and so on. So that's, that's something that we're going to do in the next sort of few weeks. Um, we may split the academic integrity and touch now to make it have a nice friendly early part and a scary part once they've actually started we're not sure about that yet um so we said we'd do in the in the, in the um in the, in the proposal for this we said we'd give you some top tips so the next couple of slides are our top tips and hopefully again these are probably going to be a lot of things that you've already put onto the padlet um so this is the overall thing i think that we've just over the last 10 years and even more so over the last year as we've been cooperating we very much feel that the more we can join up our approach the more useful it is for students the more coherent the more sense it makes to them that they've got the understanding what assessments are what they're being asked to do they have to have their reading comprehension note-taking writing skills beefed up and then academic integrity and referencing actually makes sense we're never going to get rid of the fiddly bits of referencing, but at least if they understand why they're being asked to do it, it becomes easier for them, I think, to understand. So we have some tips like, for example, as we as a librarian are teaching referencing, we now are putting more emphasis on the why of reference and not, oh, you've got a comma in the wrong place. That's a bad thing. As long as they're saying, here is where I learn things from. That's the key thing. And again, I'm sure we all do this already, but we've beefed it up for ourselves. And again, we don't try and teach referencing without putting into context. You have to demonstrate you've read good stuff. Um, you have to make good notes. And then you do not write from your sources. You write from your notes. What does this mean? What is your source telling you? Explain it to me. OK, now you've paraphrased. Now you've put it into your own words. So having, I think, bad examples of what paraphrasing looks like, as well as good examples, is really key. Um, I have a real example of a student who was really furious that they'd been told they'd plagiarised. What they'd done is they'd taken a source and they'd word switched and had been told that they hadn't paraphrased, they hadn't put things into their own words. But I did. When I changed the words, that was me putting things into my own words. How dare you say I was cheating? So rather than say you must put things into your own words, we now explain more. It's like, read this and tell me what it means. OK, now write down what you've just told me. So less emphasis on the words and more on the understanding what you're paraphrasing. And again, we used to teach journal article referencing and say this is how you reference a journal. But when you're looking at things on the Internet, you've got PDF and it, says it has some, a weird string of numbers. But this other PDF doesn't have that. That's a report or a web page or something. But again, kind of covering what different kinds of source are and what they look like before you teach how to reference them. So hopefully, maybe we were just very backwards at Bradford and you were all doing this already. But again, these are the kind of things that um, is, I think is making a difference in just the library's referencing teaching. So those are some 
things that we wanted you to maybe think about. But the, the overall top tips, go back to basics in your teaching, but then go more basic than that. I think what we've seen in the past couple of years with UK based students who haven't been at school, haven't been sort of socialized into academic behavior. Um, anybody who's got a large proportion of first generation students and of course, international students, we were making assumptions about what they understood already, what they thought working at university was and our assumptions were wrong. We have really had to just go back to the absolute rock solid, you know, you're gonna fail all your assessments unless you do this kind of stuff and then build up from that. Okay, so you have to do this and that means X. Okay, so now, now that you know X, we can teach you Y. Um, and if you knew all this already, that's brilliant because that means you've already got a good foundation and we're giving you a quick refresher. So, but yeah, absolutely go back to basics. Absolutely check with the students. If you can talk to somebody, set up focus groups or see if you can read some student work after you taught them referencing and see if what are they still making exactly the same mistakes. And again, the writing in plain English, we all understand the importance of it, but I think getting somebody who isn't a librarian, your equivalent of, of Bradford's Language Centre to read stuff through is always really helpful. So those are our top tips. We did also say we would give top tips on um, whether or not a piece of work that a student has handed in is contract cheating. Because of um, essentially that really ended up not tying in with anything else in the session. So we've done that, we've put a slide in, but I'm not gonna talk about it. Um, so instead, we now are at question time. Um, also in questions, while we're doing this, we'd love you to sort of do a little bit of reflection and think is there one thing that you've learned from other people in the session today or for me or Louisa um, that you are gonna take back. But, um, but yes, yeah, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now so I can actually look at the chat and the question and answer. Um, so we would love now to deal first with any questions that have come in as we've gone along in the chat um, and then um, we're well, also happy to have you turn on your mics and ask by voice if you'd like to. Um, there is one in there from Sarah. Sarah. Um, yeah, our referencing sessions also last for a maximum of 60 minutes typically in the library. So again, we've, we've, we've done the thing where you, you cut down your expectations. We don't try and teach them now how to reference a book and a journal article and a, and a book chapter and a website. We do the, the why and the paraphrasing and how to reference um, maybe um, a book and a website or a website and a journal article and then show them the guide and say, we've now taught you the general concepts, come and ask us individually if you have questions. Um, and we are also now promoting things like um, um, my bib and um, bib citation and Zotero bib as being actually quite good online referencing tools. I think it's safe to say most of the online referencing tools used to be pretty bad, but those three are actually a lot better. So we are outsourcing some of it now. Um, We've got a couple more questions in there, Jen. We've got one from Sinead um, and Susanna. Um, so uh, do you want to deal with the one from Susanna and I'll, while I think about the one from um, Sinead? So hi, Susanna. Um, any e resources such as skills for study? Um, from a, from a, an academic skills perspective, yes, it's been really essential that we've we've really responded to that need for students to have that twenty four seven access um, and to uh, kind of uh, not just not just upload recordings of live sessions, but really develop that asynchronous learning material that that they can really use as independent learners and if you're interested in 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 any of that we, uh, we're really happy for you and i'd have a separate conversation or i'm sure that jen will follow that up with you as well from my perspective yeah so we've got a couple of have you had any experience of students using essay mills and um students who are submitting work that they've run through paraphrasing software um to um to to try and get round turn it in or its equivalent to, to prime for Libras. Yes, absolutely. I think and that's a that's a um an international issue. I think every university in the world is having that at the moment. Um, I think contract cheating in the in terms of essay mills, 
Um, so, for example, like I said, we had a, we have a slide with top tips for, for detecting that. Um, and then we've put Bristol University has some really useful guidelines online. So we've linked to that in the Padlet. Um, but yeah, the AI stuff. This year, it still seems to be not perfect. Something that's been run through Quillbot or, or similar online paraphrasing, it still doesn't really make sense. It doesn't really work as a well-written piece of work. I think in the next, honestly, the next year, um, academics and um, learner developers are gonna have to look seriously at their assessments. But they're gonna have to include more vivas, which is gonna add hugely to their workload. But I think the AI aspect of this is actually really scary and we don't have a ton of, of tools for it yet. I think there's, there's an arms race going on where Turnitin and its equivalents are trying to develop um, AI that can find other AI's work, but I think also universities are just gonna have to have to deal with this. And there isn't a ton that we as, you know, because that's determined cheating. All the, all the teaching about how not to accidentally plagiarize is not going to prevent somebody from buying an essay. Um, so I think it's down to detection. Um, again, yeah, it's it's kind of yeah, Lady Gaga becoming woman Gaga. We've we've had um, forensic students submitting talking talking about crisp evidence instead of fresh evidence. All, all sorts of uh, fun examples, but yeah, it's a problem that we don't have any answers to, but everybody's dealing with it. Um, so and just to, uh, just to oh, add to um, the question that Susanna had around additionally learning resources, I've just popped a link in um, the uh, chat for uh, something on Rise Articulate, which is the critical thinking toolkit. I found that invaluable to signpost students to as a, a, a sub, sort of supplementary resource to help them with some of these underpinning skills. Yeah, and you know, we, we've got things that we developed in house. We have a, a step up to HE program with lots of resources for people um, who are sort of nervous about starting at university or worried they don't have the skills. We have um, lots of materials in different parts of our VLE for all our students to access. But yeah, again, there's also lots of good stuff out there. There's no point in totally reinventing the wheel. I've got to say, Sinead, that is a brilliant example of Lady Gaga being switched to Woman Gaga. Brilliant. Um, yeah, <laughs> some, of, some of the things we see are just sort of great. It, it's like one, one of the one of the um, the core, core ways to, to detect word switching plagiarism is this paragraph just doesn't make any sense. The words they're using are not the words that actually describe the issue they've they've taken a thesaurus and swapped but they've they've picked bad synonyms it's uh, and it gets both funny and frustrating it's like if you put the, that amount of work into actually doing it you'd learn something <laughs> but yes uh does anybody have any sort of final questions uh do we do sessions for different disciplines or across all subject areas um, the library sessions are definitely discipline by discipline. We also run workshops, you know, drop-in workshops, which are for everybody. Um, Louisa, it, it's both for you too, really, isn't it? It is, yeah. We, we, we embed as much as possible into at programme level, but we do run a generic offer as well. And, uh, and then the example I, I said around the plenary that we're running for, for the Students' Union, that's very much a kind of um, university-wide initiative. So. So uh, somebody said um, bad examples of, of plagiarism was helpful. Yeah, I'd, uh, not of, of plagiarism, of, of, of paraphrasing um, was helpful. Yeah, it, and it's until I sort of set up a form, it, I, when we did this in Microsoft Forms, because it was over COVID, you know, here is, a, here is a sentence, here are four paraphrases of the same sentence, which one is a good one? And all the students went for one of the bad ones. And it kind of went, oh, right. And, and it was the one where essentially the, two sentences in our original were swapped round and they'd go, oh yes, that's saying exactly the same thing. Yes, it is saying exactly the same thing. So yeah, kind of, uh, if anybody wants to, to see my examples of that to develop their own, again, email me and I will very, very happily share. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it was eye-opening to see. So I think we are just on the brink of running out of time. Um, send me an email the link our, our emails are on the padlets i think we forgot to put our emails on the slides we sent to the conference but they are on the padlets 
Um, so um, yes, unless anybody has any last final thing. Thank, Thank you all very, very much for coming. Um, can I just ask you? Totally. And um, you may have said uh, earlier, what referencing guide do you use? Do you have your own or have you got, we use site we, and write? Um, we, we have our own um, based on sort of standard Harvard, but slightly simplified. Um, there's also a numeric style and OSCO and APA in use, but most of our departments use Harvard. And yeah, and you, they manage to use the same one. They don't try and bring their own in or say, I've used this one before or for another they, institute. They, 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 they try to, we try and slow yeah. them down. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, we try and we try and work with them to help them understand how complicated it is for students, not slap them down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay, thank you very much. Cool. Thank you so much um, again to um, to our speakers. Um, so just before we go, um, I just want to let everybody know that we have a short break now before the next session. So feel free to use, make use of our lounges either to carry on this discussion or do some networking um, or take a look at our sponsor booths. Um, and the next session is going to be the presentation from our silver sponsors, um, Adam Matthew Digital and AnyBook Library Services at 11.35. Um, and also just to highlight that we will be sending out a feedback survey at the end of the day, and we'd really appreciate anything that you have to add to that. Um, and I will let everyone go now. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. <laughs>